Well, I haven't done a video in a while and here we go. This one I wanted to do because this is such a cool little device. It's called the Sid Kick and here's the little board that outlines the maker of who it is. Um, so this was uh, the result of a product by Frenetic and I hope I pronounced that right. And if I didn't, at least you know the thought is there to give you credit. <laughs> But what this does is it replaces your SID, all of these components. And you would think, oh, man, that's a lot of stuff, you know, and it's a lot of cost. Um, but you will be amazed. Not only does it replace the, can it replace the 6581 or the 8580 um, through emulation, and that's what this board does, um, along with the help of the, the Raspberry Pico. Um, it emulates the 6581 or the 8580, but it also allows you dual SID chips emulation so instead of having just mono sound you can actually have stereo because it'll emulate um two sid chips um and it's really cool because the thing is the raspberry pico here um through the usb port okay um allows you to update the firmware on it so you can update the firmware to show um, to configure it for a single channel, for dual channel, you can change the um, dual channel addresses. There's a few little things that you can do with the configuration as far as the board is concerned. But beyond that, once you have it in the computer, you can issue a sys command and it'll take you to a really nice configuration screen where you can configure it a little bit more. So we'll get into that once I assemble this and put it into the computer and I'll show you how all that um, works. But here's a cool thing. This board assembled as it is, you don't have to solder USB components, um, $5. Um, I got it in a batch of 10, um, but five, it, it boils down to five bucks a piece already assembled from PCB way. And the, I'm gonna leave links to all of this stuff in the description. So there's $5. The Pico, the Raspberry Pico, okay, that is $5 a piece on Amazon all day long. You can get two of them for like, you know, 12 bucks or something like that. Um, use a coupon or whatever, and they're, they come down to $5 a piece. Okay, if that's all you need for $10, that's all you need to replace your SID. That and the jumpers. And the two sets of jumpers that I have here is for the uh, SID kick um, board, I'm using... Uh, the little round pins and there's a reason for that it's just easier to plug in and out and then for the raspberry board i'm using square pins and you'll see the reasoning for that as well once i put it together for you so ten dollars maybe 12 for the pins and everything um, you got yourself a sid replacement add another five dollars to this i sound like an infomercial <laughs> for another five dollars um Add a DAC board that you can get on Amazon, okay, for five bucks a piece. It even comes with the wire leads and all this other stuff. But add this to the mix, and now this allows you to take advantage of the dual SID capabilities, and this gives you stereo sound. And then it gives you a phono jack, okay, um, which we'll take advantage of, but you can also hardwire your stereo. You can wire this to pin seven of your AV port. Um, it, pin 7 gives you the second sound channel if you wanted that. So there's a, a lot of stuff that you get out of this that's really, really cool and cost effective. For the whole kit and caboodle here, we're talking about 15 bucks. And actually, in Europe, they were selling the entire kit already assembled minus this for like 6 euros. Um, insane, especially since you know how much a SID chip can cost, um, whether you're using ARM SID, back SID, WIN. I mean, uh, you know, it's, it, this is just going to be a, an amazing thing once people find out about it because of its cost advantages. So let me show you the easiest way to build this strategically so you can uh, have an easier time soldering all the components on. The first thing we're going to do, whether you use the DAC or not for um, the dual SID, I'm still going to put the jumpers in place um, in case you want to add it later. So first thing we do is let's do those jumpers first. Okay. Okay. Once we have, once we have that in place, 
let's put these jumpers in here. This is for the DAC board. Okay, so once we've got those jumpers in, now what we want to do is put the socket jumpers in next. Now with these, what I like to do in order to keep the jumpers straight is I'm going to use a socket. Okay, and make sure that the pins these are the pins that are going to go into the, the SID socket, so those, those are the ones that want to be exposed. Okay, so let's get these guys. Oops. Okay, these are the ones we're going to solder first on the other side, not, not this one just yet. Okay, but we're putting it in here on purpose so we can line up the pins with the socket. That way we know the pins will be straight and they'll fit into the socket, the SID socket when the time comes, okay? Okay. So, again, we don't want to solder these just yet. I'm going to leave these last. Solder the ones here in the middle, okay? Okay, so now that those are soldered in, again, we don't want to solder the other side um, just yet. So let's take this out. Okay, we'll leave these intact. Now we want to solder these guys for the Pico board next. Okay, so make sure you have the orientation for the Pico board correct, okay, top or bottom. So Let's get these guys here in place first. Okay. Notice where the USB port is over here is going to be opposite of the two pins here. Okay. So we're going to turn this upside down like this. And put these pins through here. Okay, so now we can solder the top parts here and the bottom parts here. Okay, and you want to make sure that the board is straight and level. Okay. 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 So now that we've got these pins soldered here, we'll do the top of the Pico board now. Okay. All right. So now we've got all the pins soldered. We've got this last set of pins here that go along the sides right here. Okay, so now that we've got this all soldered, all the pins soldered and everything, you could leave this just like this. This will replace your SID. Um, we'll need to configure it. I'll plug this into the PC um, and putting the firmware on it. Um, that'll put the firmware on the Pico board. And then um, once we get it plugged into the computer, we'll do a sys command and get to the um, configuration screen. So again, this will replace your SID just as it is like it is now. But if we want stereo, you're going to need the DAC board. Okay, so let me show you what that looks like. Okay. 
this will turn that into the dual SID board, okay? So in this package, this little kit that I bought for five dollars, it also includes wires, which we're not going to use, and it also includes um, these pins, which we're not going to use. Okay, so now that we have this um, DAC board, we need to line up. So on the DAC board, you see here where it has the writing, okay, um, then which is your voltage in. Um, your ground, your clock, your din, and all that stuff. So basically, we need to line that up. You see the board here, which has the same markings, okay? Um, BCC is din, um, voltage in, your ground, clock, so on and so forth. So you want to make sure that this lines up so you know that this is going to be going like this. And that's why we put these, these uh, jumpers here so we can plug the board in like so make sure the VIN pin is on the VIN which it is okay so now here's the thing I'm gonna solder this on here because you can see if I solder it on it's going to be pretty level with the Pico board in prior versions I didn't do that and my prior version that I first did is I decided to be Thought I would be smart, and I oh maybe I don't want to have the the Pico board on, but maybe I want it on later, and I don't want to have to solder it on. So I figured, well, I'll just put these jumpers in, and there you go. If I ever want the stereo, I can just plug this thing in. The problem with that though is that you can see it adds some height to this, and it makes this thing stick out some. Well, shoot, you know what? These DAC boards are only five bucks, so if I don't use them, I don't use them. But if I do, it's on there already, and I think I'm going to just solder it on so everything lines up evenly. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. And that will do it for the board. So now we have a dual SID, SID replacement. And notice the pins here that go into the socket. They're a little higher than the pins here on the side, so you don't, really, you don't really even need to cut these pins at all. You can leave everything just the way it is, because when this goes into the SID socket, you can see okay, that those pins aren't going to be touching anything. Okay, so I think we're done with the soldering stuff. Let's go ahead and uh, plug this into the computer. Um, I'll show you. So these are for the address lines. If you're going to use the dual SID, you need to set the addresses so there's no address conflict between the two SIDs. So th this will go um, to two jumpers that we're going to put on the motherboard um, coming out of the CPU. And I'll show you where those are. And then here, we can actually do one of several things. You can um, solder leads onto here and to a plug in the back of your computer or you can put a stereo plug in here um, and take the wires from the plug here without having to solder anything and plug it and, and send it to a plug on the computer. Um, you can also take um, the wiring here and go to uh, pin 7 on, on the 8 pin um, din in the back. Pin 7 is pretty much used as the second sound channel you have your right and your left so you can even set that pin up and you can see here what everything is laid out for you okay Let's see here so you have your left out your ground your right out your ground and so on so that is um that is one clean little board all of this for fifteen dollars can you imagine the impact this will have all right so let's go ahead i'm going to first go to the pc get the firmware updated in here and then we'll plug this into a computer and see what we got okay so stay tuned okay so here we are in front of the front of my computer um so this is the pico board so 
brand new without having any firmware updates on it or anything like that, as soon as we plug it into the USB port, um, you'll see what we get on the screen and I'll take it from there. So let's go ahead and plug this guy in. Okay, so here's what I see on the screen here. Okay, this is the Pico uh, board right here. So we want to copy um, a firmware file onto here. And these are the firmware files for the SIDKIC. Um, this is the zip file that you can download. Um, the description and the GitHub um, repositories in the, let me backtrack, the repository for SIDKIC is in the description of this video. And that's where you can grab this file from. This file contains all of these except Flash Nuke. I use Flash Nuke um, to clear the Pico boards um, completely. So in this case, though, SK Pico are the files that come with SIDKIC. Um, there's a few firmware files on here. If you look here, and some of this is just my educated guess because I couldn't find a description for all of these, but my educated guess is as follows. So if I move this this DAC file, the DAC file over, um, basically that's going to pass all the sound through the, the DAC board, the second SID. Um, the LED and the RGB um, firmware here passes everything through the DAC board um, and it utilizes the little LEDs on the board to flash on and off with the music or the sound. Then we have the DAC PWM. Well, let me backtrack a little bit and or go down a little bit. PWM is the, just the single channel SID. So we didn't put a DAC board on here. Um, you would use this firmware, PWM. Maybe you want the little LED lights or whatever going off, on and off on the on, on the little assembly here, then you would upload uh, this firmware. I, I believe RGB is, is similar to that. It's just the light, you know, little lights going on and off. Um, so then you have the DAC and PWM. This is for both. This is for stereo. So this is the SID channel um, that's on the board. And then this is the channel that we're enabling with the DAC board. So I'm going to want this because I want stereo and I install the DAC board onto my Pico. And I will go ahead and flash the little LED on and off on the board. So this is what we're going to copy over is this file here. Okay, so I'm going to move that to the Pico board here, and as soon as it gets pushed in, it's the window disappears and you're all set. Now, here's the thing. What if you change your mind, you don't want to use the DAC board, and you want to go and use only the single channel PWM file? Watch what happens. If, if I unplug my Pico, and plug it back in, you don't hear a sound, the, the USB sound. That's from the computer. And that's because there is no window for this because firmware is already loaded on here. So if you want to update your firmware, you use a different firmware. You have to unplug it from the USB. And you have to hold down the boot button here. And while you hold down the boot button, plug it in. Okay, and now you can see, hear the sound, and you can see the window now appears. And notice that there's no firmware file in here. So I usually like to use Flash Nuke and completely clear the Pico, um, but I presume that if you just moved or copied one of these files over, it'll just um, clear and overwrite the firmware that's already there. Okay. So that's how you change your mind about using the DAC um, or not, or what have you. Um, that's how you reset your Pico. So now that we have the Pico set, and one more thing, don't plug the USB into your Pico and into your computer while the SIDKIC is um, on your in, in installed in your Commodore. You have to unplug unplug the uh, the SIDKIC from the Commodore and um, and independently plug it into the USB. 
okay that's rather important because you could fry things you know some chips or what have you on your board if you're plugging in um, your USB while the board is still uh, plugged into your 64 okay all right so let's go to the 64 now and uh, and load up the configuration and let's hear some music all right so stay tuned okay so here we are on our test board I have my um, SID kick plugged in here. Now, I want stereo out of this, so I have the DAC board in these two jumpers, which I'll explain what they do. But if I didn't want stereo and I just wanted to just replace a regular SID chip in it, you don't need the DAC board or these jumpers. All you need is just the Pico board piece. So that's it. But because I want stereo, I have the DAC board connected, and because I'm going to utilize two SIDs, emulated anyways, um, I need to set address lines or address for the for the second SID, and that's what these lines do. So this inner pin is A5 on this board. If you turn it over, you'll see the markings. Let me see if I can get another board here. Okay, you'll see the markings here on the very bottom of the board. Okay, let's say A5 and A8. Okay, so A5, which is the in pin, goes to um, the CPU pin 12, and A8 goes to CPU pin 15. Now, I have it set up with little jumpers like this because this is just temporary. This is my test board. But what you could do is every single board, you know, they're all different, you know, versions, of course, but all the boards have these little pads here, these little dots that you see on the board. Okay, those dots actually go to um, one of the pins on the on any one of the different ICs here. So if you take a multimeter or look at a schematic, you'll find which pin from the CPU um, goes with what little pad on the board. And what you can do is just solder in a one pin on the pads, on these two pads that correlate to those two pins, and then just have a jumper cable going from these two to each one of those pins. So you might have to just solder the one pin in, um, but it's relatively simple, okay? So anyways, so now that we've got this mounted on the board, let's take a look at the screen. What I'm going to do is I'm going to type in SYS, SYS54333. So let's go ahead and look at the screen and see what we get from there. Okay, so let's take a look at um, the configuration. So SYS54333. Okay. Okay. So that's great. So we're emulating um, 8561 chips here. So um, we're going to change that to 6581 for SID 1. And we're going to just leave everything else the way it is and then come back to SID 2 and type 6581. And you can change the addresses, but I'm going to just leave it as is. This is an NTSC. Computer recognize that when I chose 85 six, or 6581 for the SIDs, and we're going to save the configuration by hitting S. Okay, and that's all we need to do. So we're going to shut the computer off now and throw an Easy Flash cartridge in to select um, select some music. Okay. Okay. So we're back on our board. So I have an amplifier underneath. I have a stereo plug plugged into the DAC board and on the back the right and left go on to the amplifier I shut off the speaker on the monitor so let's play a SID tune now okay and see what we got here let's pick a at random here let's see what we have all right, so there's no sound only because I have the volume turned down. Let's turn the volume up. Okay. And then here's the left channel. And there's the right channel. So we're getting stereo sound out of it. So you have a SID um, music that um, takes advantage of left, right. There you go. We got sound coming out of both left and right. Now remember the firmware that we chose. Um, we chose the one with the LED 
light and RGB. I, the LED light going on and off is that on the Pico. So if we chose the firmware without the LED, I don't believe that light will be on going on and off. Uh, that one I'm not sure because I think that's the power light to the DAC. But nonetheless, um, we've shown what we can do with, um, with this. So let's go ahead and wrap this up. This is good. All right, so let's summarize what we've done here. For $15, we've built an emulator because it's not, um, you know, it's not gonna give you the precise sound of the hardware SID, but it's really damn close. And it does work with paddles. Um, and you can configure it so easily. Just, you know, throwing a sys command, you get into configuration and you can configure it just like arm SID, just like um, back SID. You can configure it for, you know, um, Paller and TSC. Um, I don't have, I don't believe you have the waveforms. I'll have to look a little further in that, but um, where you can manipulate it like a back SID or an arm SID you can. I think those have a little bit more configuration, but for $15 dual SID, are you kidding me? And if you didn't have the dual SID, this thing would cost you, you know, 10 or under, okay? 10 for a SID that works with paddles. I mean, you know, seriously, that's, that's, a, that's amazing. So, and again, it is emulated, you know, so it's not precise. So if you're, if you're an auto file, an audio file, you know, you might note the differences in your ear, but for the average user playing regular games, you're not going to notice. This is just um, really, really cool. So, um, again, I hope you got something out of this. Um, great product. was really happy to make and excited, actually, to make a video of this. So, there you have it. And like I always say, live for today. You only live once. Life is short. Enjoy the heck out of it. All right. Peace out.